a little pop-up draft of second-year receivers who need to step up. I'll give you the first selection. Well, I, I don't think there's any doubt it's him, right? I mean, I almost feel not even fair. Uh, the, the Traylon Burks is by far and away the guy that needs to step up. We just talked about it. You know, they're, they're, they're talking about dusting off a, a 10-year NFL receiver uh, because they don't have anybody there, and they're going to try to make him the man. It's the worst receiving core in football. I think it's fair to say that. I don't mean to be a jerk by it. I just think that's the facts of the reality. So, And then he was. they traded A.J. Brown away in the same year they drafted him. And, of course, year one was underwhelming. So, yeah, I think Traylon Burks is the guy that we're all going to look at to go, wait, can he help this Titans team and can he you know, show that he was worth that first-round pick? I'm going to say George Pickens because when you look at – at his numbers last year, 801 yards, 52 catches. He's better than that. He appeared in all 17 yeah, games right. last season. He needs to perform at a higher level because the talent suggests production yeah. much greater than that. They need to lean on him this year. Kenny Pickett settling in. Pickett and Pickens tied together for their careers in Pittsburgh, although Kenny – God, it's hard when you're thinking Pickett's and Pickens. Pickett and Pickens. Kenny Pickett, Pickett right. is going to be there longer than George Pickens. Yeah. This is going to be problematic. <laughs> but but I, I th this is the time. Deontay Johnson has the contract, but Pickens has the talent, and Pickens has the upside, and this is the year for him to step up. Yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah, say that. Uh, Pickens and Pickett and Pittsburgh. Can you say that three times fast? All right. And Pickens and Pickett and Pittsburgh. Yep, and you're you're such a Steelers fan. I mean, you really are. Whenever there's an in doubt Just moment, you 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 always make a Steeler. You always do. I, when in I'm, doubt, go with right. your favorite team, the Steelers. That's right up the road that you don't want. Yeah, you're gonna let you there, huh? Uh, but yeah, I hear you there. I think you're right on 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 right on. You know, on point there with what you're saying about Pickens. I think the fact that Chase Claypool's out of there. He doesn't have to worry about that. He gets the full offseason of being the guy with Deontay Johnson. I would expect his role to pick up in a big way. Because like you said, too, he's a he's get, he showed us number one receiver traits last year. I would think they're going to formulate more of the offense around him. And then, of course, with Kenny Pickett being in year two, he showed promise. Uh, I could see that being I could see Pickens being the lead receiver on that football team this year. I wouldn't be shocked if that happened, Mike. So I'm with you there. Um Woo. Some good ones to pick here, really. I, I think I, I think I will go to Christian Watson and Green Bay. And I and, and I'd like to state, first off, he stepped up a little bit last year after a rough start. I, I mean, I think he showed what he's all about a little towards the end of the year. I mean, what, what was it? He scored a touchdown in like what, seven out of eight games or something like that. It was four games in a row at one point. But I say that more because of the quarterback situation. I think it's pretty obvious. Yeah, Watson's got to be a guy that yeah, he can't drop balls, and he's going to have to make some plays, and he's capable of that. I think it's a guy that's got superstar talent, and I think we saw that last year. I mean, there's again, it's, it goes back to our point we've talked about with Dalvin Cook and things like that. There's only a number of people in football that you can go, here's the ball, and you can score from wherever. And Christian Watson showed the ability to be that guy last year. Slant route, boom, I'm up the sidelines, gone for a touchdown. Post route, against the Cowboys, gone. See you later, bye-bye. I mean, he's got that type of superstar-type talent here, and he's going to have to show that to, to bring Jordan a love and that offense along, along this year. Nine touchdowns in 48 touches last year. He came on late, and he would have had he would have had 10 touchdowns if he didn't drop the one that was in his hands first snap of the <laughs> yeah. season when he blew past Patrick Peterson. I'm telling you, I wonder how differently the rest of the year goes for him, for Aaron Rodgers, for the Green Bay Packers, if that play works. And is Rodgers still in Green Bay if that play had worked and they'd won that game and they'd gotten off to a different start with a different vibe and a different level of connection between Rodgers and Watson. I'll go Sky Moore. We were talking yesterday, and we've been talking repeatedly about the potential fit in Kansas City for DeAndre Hopkins. Not that Sky Moore is that kind of player, but if Moore steps up, you don't need yeah. a DeAndre Hopkins. Right. If it's Sky Moore, Kadarius Tony, Travis Kelsey, because Kelsey's kind of already what Hopkins would be, best case scenario. 
a big slot guy. That's right. That's what Kelsey is. Right. And so yes, you get right. Sky Moore and Kadarius Tony on the outside, and Travis Kelsey's roaming freely in the middle of the field. Yeah, I, I think that's very fair. That's right. And then Sky Moore too. You know, I think there's a hope that he can be that slot guy to work the middle of the field too, and be that guy as well. You know, so I, I hear you there. But yeah, I, I think it is important that he he carves out a role that's significant within that offense. Not that he has to have 90 receptions or 100 receptions or anything like that, but be a guy that we all go, ooh, wait, the Kansas City's got a good number two or three there and Sky Moore that can do a little bit of everything, right? And that, you know, that's where I, I do think the they'll continue to evaluate. We know that. I think that's why they drafted the Rasheed Rice, too, to your point, because he could be that big slot guy that can be like a Juju Smith-Schuster-like presence there. He's great after the catch, too. Uh, but, yeah, Sky Moore, I think, is going to have to carve out a role. I'm, I'm with you there, Mike. Um, I think the, I mean, there, there's some good ones here. You know, I don't want to pick Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave because I, I feel like they stepped up last year. I know that we could talk about them in that way again this year, but, damn, they were good. I, you know, I think I'm going to go to Tyquan Thornton here next. Tyquan Thornton is a guy that I look at to go, hey, a little bit controversial uh, being picked at, in the second round, I don't know if you know most people thought he was worthy of that, but when you look at the Patriots roster and what they got, they got some good receivers. They don't have a guy that you go, whoa, he scares me to death, or whoa, we better back up or he's going to run by us, and that's what he can be, and I think they got to have him step up and scare people a little bit in that element, whether it's you know reverse speed sweeps or go routes and running by people. But it's a part of, I think Mac Jones has improved as a deep ball thrower, and it's a part of their offense that they need this year to take some pressure off of everything else. He, he Tyquan Thornton's got to have a big year. Yeah, and look, this gets into that whole Patriots, is it an error of drafting? Is it insufficiency yeah. in development? Are they patient enough with these guys? But you're right, they need some help there. I will go with, and and look, I, I appreciate that Pete does a very thorough job of listing options for us, but when the when Garrett Wilson was the Offensive Rookie of the Year, I think it's, it's, uh, it's hard to say he needs to step up. He's already stepped up. I don't think Wilson needs to do anything more than just do what he did last year. Alec Pierce of the Colts, mm. especially with Anthony Richardson there, he needs help from his receivers, and Pierce was a guy they really liked last year. He had 41 catches for 593 yards in 16 games with Matt Ryan and Sam Ellinger and Nick Foles out there at various times. With Richardson and that rocket arm, it's time for somebody to get down the field and get open and go get the ball when Richardson throws it and Pierce has the opportunity to step up into a key role for the Colts. Yeah, I, I, I would agree. I mean, uh, you know, the Paris Campbell's gone, right? We know it's the Michael Pittman Jr., Alec Pierce show at receiver. I, he's got size, speed. He's a good route runner. You know, it seems like it'd work there with Richardson. Run the ball, run the ball. You know, a little bit like Philly. Okay, now we got one-on-one -on, -one on the outside, and this guy, you know, can get open against man-to-man -man coverage and has that type of talent. I'm, I'm, You know me. I'm a big fan of Alec Pierce. I really am. And, yeah, I think he's going to be showing a lot of people how talented he is if he gets the opportunities with, with throwing the football and how they play in, in, in Indianapolis. But uh, that is definitely a, a guy that got to have a big year, and they need that other weapon other than the run game and Richardson and the pass. They need something there in that pass game that scares people. Um, I guess – I think that's three rounds. Oh, that's okay. We're going to go one more? You want to go another one? one more. All right. Well, I mean, Drake London is one I think we'd both agree on, right? Or maybe we just talk. We don't have to draft. We can just talk about it. But Drake London, right? He's a guy I'd – I mean, you go rookie quarterback, B. John Robinson at running back, right? We got Kyle Pitts who's injured but sounds like he's going to be ready to go by the start of the year and training camp and all that. I would think Drake London is going to be leaned on early, early on, especially with as well they run the ball. He's going to have those one-on-one -on -one matchups outside. Uh, I expect Drake London to to come through in a big way for the Falcons this year. And look, John Mechie's on the list. Yeah, and I don't want to put too much on a guy who missed all of last year because of cancer. This is more of an opportunity. This is found money for him and the Texans. Anything he does this year is a bonus. So it's not really needs to step up but has a hell of an opportunity because I think the bar is low. We're not going to expect a guy who's come back from cancer to go out there and tear up the league. But if he does, if he has a big year, if he ends up becoming 
C.J. Stroud's favorite target and puts up big numbers, he's going to be somebody that we we champion and we herald and that we we you know I I'm always a big fan of anyone who has a public cancer battle whether they choose to make it public or not. But when you're an athlete or a coach, it's kind of hard to keep it quiet. It serves as inspiration and motivation for all the millions of other people who are fighting that horrible, awful disease privately. And and I know from when my mom had it, if there was somebody out there like Jim Valvano at the time, if there's somebody out there who's going through the same thing, it really gives them. I've told Ron Rivera this. It gives people something they can cling to by way of hope yeah, yeah. and incentive. Right. So it would be a, a great story if John Mechie has a big year because then people will know his story and it will inspire others who are currently fighting cancer to keep fighting. It's not easy. Keep going and you can get back to a normal life. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I'm root, I think we're all rooting for John Michi, 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 Michi. I'm the I always butcher his name there. But yeah, and and to your point, Mike, he, you know, I think has a chance to really carve out. I mean, it, it's wide open season there. There's no go to guy in Houston. Robert Woods, Nico Collins. They drafted Tank Dell. From Houston in the middle of the draft. I mean, so there's, there's, I, I would think it's open season there as far as no slot guy. You know, I think they're just going to, hey, whoever competes and plays the best in training camp preseason. And Michi seems like he's the perfect slot type receiver to fit that role. He's smart. We know he knows how to run routes coming out of Alabama. I'm rooting for him. And I think he's got a chance to, yeah, be that kind of out of the nowhere 70 80 reception type of guy uh i think he does have that type of potential wandell all right uh, wandell robinson on. another Go guy ahead. mike that's the last guy i'll throw out there wandell Rob wandell robinson of the giants second round pick uh, you know last year got hurt so and of course we know the giants receiving core it, it's improved but it's it's not superstar he's a guy too that like like Amici is a slot receiver that is very important to the Brian Dayball New Englandish type of offense. Uh, they certainly could use his help in New York too. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.